Hey guys, so quick question. How do you make a nude tasteful? Well, I'm going to try to explain it in this video, and it's going to be a kind of an interesting one to, to uh, consider. So hopefully you'll learn something, and I'll see you in the video as we go. So I didn't start out this artwork with the intention of it being a completely nude character. So the, the thing about it is you have to find a way to draw it, but have it still be respectful of the human body. So what we're going to do is even though the character is nude, we're not going to show anything. And that may seem a bit odd. It's like, isn't the point of nude bearing it all? Well, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. The, the goal when you draw a nude is to show the artistic part of the human body. And I know that may sound pretentious, but as long as you keep in mind your goal, which for me, the goal in this artwork was specifically to kind of add an elegance to the character. So whenever you start to do that, your goal is to show off the human form. You'll learn about this a lot whenever you're in art school. But um, weirdly enough, I never went to art school, so I had to learn all this uh, by myself in a weird way. So if you're paying attention real far so far, you'll notice specifically that I'm trying to go for more of an elegant, very light pose. And what'll help you yourself whenever you're doing that is there are websites where you can do uh, gesture drawings. And if you Google gesture drawings timed, that'll definitely help you out a whole lot. But as you can see, like the original pose I was going with here was kind of off because it had a weird, um, almost like she's holding a golf club. It didn't make much sense. So I had to go back in and change it some more. So as you can see, I'm slowly starting to develop in my mind what I want to do. But I just got to kind of correct it and make it look better. This was actually an artwork where I did not have a reference. So I had to uh, go from my brain, and my brain's a bit goofy at times. So I had to change the, uh, the sketch constantly. Because uh, I have aphantasia, which means I cannot see things in my head very clearly, or if, if at all. It's usually completely black inside my thoughts. I can think of concepts, but not images, if that makes sense. So here is where I finally settle on a pose. You'll notice that the, that the arms cover up the breasts, and the movement of the character is very... Um, fitting to the composition. In fact, I, I later on used the hair to guide the eye back to the face. The goal is to guide the viewer's eye where you want it to go. So in this particular artwork, I want the focus to be on the face and a little bit on the breasts and the hair. So I want everything in my composition to follow you in that circle of hair, face, breasts, hair, face, breasts. And that may seem complicated, but it's actually, it gets easier the more you do it. So there's a bit of a jump here because I forgot to hit record. But as you can see, if you notice the uh, the hair and how everything moves, including the tail, do you notice how the tail wraps back into the hair? What that does is it leads the eye. So we have the head, goes down to the hair, wraps around to the tail, back to the breast and the arm. Everything is in a fluid motion leading back to each other. Lots of curves. And everything with the goal, with the sole purpose and goal in mind to move the eye round back where it needs you to look. And we're using a uh, light carving here to plan out the lighting for this artwork. Using an eraser to carve out what we want to see. Light carving is a great technique. The more you practice it, the better you'll get. And trust me, it, it, it does a lot for your artwork. So the reason why this is tasteful, in my personal opinion, you can disagree. It's okay to disagree. But the reason I think it's tasteful is because it's more about the motion and the movement of the piece and less about the fact that the character's naked itself. Um, so weird thing when you're an artist, right? You can draw, like, I, I would argue NSFW artists don't actually feel attracted to whatever it is they're drawing. The, I may be wrong about that, but personally, I'm, I'm one of those weird people who, um, my brain is in full work mode. Like, I'm not thinking about, ooh, this character's attractive. My goal is, is the composition right? 
or is the line art correct? Is the anatomy correct? You know, you're thinking about so many things. It's kind of like how a gynecologist isn't thinking about the fact that he's dealing with uh, private parts. It's more about the fact that he has a job to do, he or she. Um, and it's the same thing with art. You are focused mainly on your job and if you're doing things correctly. Now, maybe later on you could feel something, but I don't know. I'm. It, it makes it difficult because I'm constantly worried if it's correct or not. So I find that when you start doing it, you may also have the same issue I have where you're too focused on the task at hand to really um, think about what you're drawing in that regard. And in a way, I think that helps me. Um, I feel like if I was attracted to the character while I worked, then it would be hard to work on it. Um, that may not be the same for everyone, but it is for me, and I, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to interpretation. But as you can see, I had kind of a soft expression on the character because the goal isn't like, isn't so much sexy and it's more beauty. And I think that's what I like most about drawing uh, things that, because usually um, I try to add a mix or a balance with my work where it's a sexy, but it's also um, beautiful or cute. Um, because I find if it's missing or if you're showing or bearing everything, there's nothing left to the imagination. And that takes away from the artwork, in my opinion. So I feel like having that balance of sweetness or beauty to it lends to the artwork being more memorable and less, um, less attraction driven. And... That might not be the same for everyone, but that's uh, personally how I feel. And if that makes sense, leave a comment. Let me know that it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, uh, also let me know. And I will try to find a way to explain it better next time. But as you can see with the line art, um, I'm very much focusing on curves. Curves are the main focus here. Um, lots of bending in the hair, a little bit of wildness. Um, it's just, it all leads back to the motion and movement of the eye. And actually, I'll leave a fantastic video in the comments to a friend of mine who explains composition really, really well. Um, her YouTube video is Spectralite or Waking Melons AAA. Uh, she's a fantastic artist, and I, I uh, briefly worked with her many years ago on an animation or, or animatic she was working on. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to do much work on it, and it never got finished, but it was still... It was 99.99999% her work, so I really can't take any credit for it. I tried to do some stuff for it, but my schedule never really matched with it. My, my friends all had things we were doing, so in a way, I felt like I abandoned her and her project, but she she's super cool. And a very talented artist. You, you'll love her. So yeah, I'm going to leave that in the comments because you're going to love her. She, she's an amazing artist and you can learn a whole lot from her. So now we've almost got all the base colors. And as you can see, all of that movement looping back around. Um, it, it's getting an eye for composition takes a while, but it starts to come naturally the more you do it. So um, after I link that video for a composition by Spectralite or Waking Melons, I really hope that it'll open your eye to the new things um, from it. Now, I could make a video about composition too, and I might do that, but for the most part, I do want to link uh, Spectro's Light's uh, video because it's very good, and I think it'll you'll get that tutorial faster than anything I could do. As you can see, I'm using the selection pen to kind of add a third dimension to the character. Um, the selection pen tool is super important if you want to get precise gradients. So this artwork wasn't super complicated. Just the sketching part and the line art usually are the longest parts of my videos. And that's mainly because, um, mainly because I suck at sketching and my uh, line art takes a while, but... I think that's that's a good thing. Line art taking a while isn't necessarily a bad thing. Having the the lines guide your rendering really really helps in my opinion. So, it, it 
you might not agree. Again, art is subjective and just do what feels comfortable to you. If you can learn anything from my processes, that is fantastic and is truly what my goal is. Here we go. Now we're starting to get all the details in the hair. I use a multiply layer for the three colors and then use the uh, airbrush tool as an eraser to kind of add a gradient to the hair. Then I uh, kind of blend it a bit later. I, I zoom way out to do my post-processing. That may not be the best thing, but I find it works for me. I've added a bit of wetness here to the skin, which um, may have been pushing things more toward the uh, NSFW side of things, but uh, it's it helps. I felt I feel all the lines on the skin whenever I start to add them really help lead the eye again. Now we have some add glow to the character to make the skin kind of shine and a bit more yellow, which is kind of a big thing in my style. Uh, make sure when you're using the uh, airbrush that you have it very soft and very light. Now we're adding a tonal curve to kind of blend or glue the colors together, some hard light layer, and some color balance. Now I'm adding kind of a, a nice little border here to kind of make it more there, some level correction. And there we go. We are just about done. All right. Well, that's it for me. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.